Hello, and welcome to the Long Island Weather Update. It's 10 o'clock on this Saturday night. Normally, I don't do Saturday nights, but we had uh, a little active weather tonight, and we got to talk about some active weather tomorrow. This cutoff, this freaking cutoff low, upper trough, finally shifting off to the east. It actually had showers around for a part of the day in some parts of Suffolk County, um, and a little sprinkles here in Nassau. It's finally moving away, but as this moves away, you can see over here, we've got the next system waiting in the wings for tomorrow afternoon. Yay. Uh, so we'll look at the wider satellite view, and you can see there's the next system. There's your big storm that's finally pulling out, and the next system's going to roll right in on us tomorrow. You can see the southeastern part of the country fairly clear, even the south and the Midwest fairly clear as well. Um, but uh, we're, we're going to get into a little bit of it tomorrow, but not too much of it unfortunately um and so looking at what the day was like today we had a lot of again clouds and even some showers i'll just rewind the radar so you can see that we had that shower activity that was uh popping up and then over suffolk county there was like an area of showers that kind of went a little more over suffolk it was basically just a sprinkle here in nassau county but i noticed some weather sites were reporting light rain with that uh and we have very windy conditions and again the weather service Failed to issue a wind advisory, and I think today's winds definitely met that criteria for a wind advisory. Ice lift gusted all the way up to 51 miles an hour, and it was chilly today. I was only 54 at ice lift. Uh, again, we had clouds around almost the entire day, uh, you know, just cloudy skies. Another cloudy day, but you could see the kind of winds that we were dealing with today. West-northwest winds gusting into the 30s and even 40s at times. You could see light rain being reported at ice lift around noon into the afternoon hours. Uh, luckily, we didn't get that here in Nassau County. Probably wasn't much. It only added up to a trace, but enough to be a nuisance if you did have to deal with it. Um, that's for sure. Um, and, yeah, look at some of these winds here. Uh, um, Kings Park still gusting up to 20, still 25 miles an hour. It's, again, a lot of wind. Let's see if Stony Brook gusted too. Look at this. They had a gust up to 57 at the Stony Brook Hospital. Right now, west-northwest wind at 27, gusting at 38. Air pressure is pretty low, 29.49 inches. Um, and you can see here, uh, temperatures generally in the 50s. Uh, all, so it was warmer. It got probably got a little warmer in Jersey. We're going to look at the highs now uh, because of uh, they got a little into a little more sun. So let's see. Yeah, they got up to 63 in tom's river uh but for us we were mainly stuck in the mid 50s with the clouds they had some sun in the afternoon in jersey uh that we didn't get later in the afternoon uh lows generally mid for mid to upper 40s generally across the area so i think we were below normal today but those lows might keep us from um from let's just see what west well could west hampton gusted to 51 i mean again why why no wind advisory today? I mean, I don't understand what, why the Weather Service did not issue a wind advisory. It was very windy today uh, because we're in that cyclonic flow from that trough, and that's where we're stuck in the clouds. Um, now, if you look at Jersey, probably not as windy. Let's go and look and see what it was like. In, so if we look there, well, no, they had a wind gust of 51 at Miller Air Park as well. So um, as far as Philadelphia didn't issue a wind advisory, uh, but you could see uh, it did get warmer there because they got into some sunshine. You could see actually uh, after, uh, oh man, they had some, yeah, they had gotten into some sunshine there, it looks like. Uh, so they got into some sun. If you were in Jersey today, actually got into, and then the skies cleared out completely by the evening. Um, so, yeah, I can uh, show you here in the seaside on the camera here, show you. They got into some sun, so we'll show you here. I'll rewind this two let's see what we got here okay three to four p.m all right you can see now they still deal with the clouds i guess but if you look to the south um i should change it to seaside too see that camera moving around that means that there's but if you look to the south you'll see that there's blue sky so here you can see the blue sky breaking out this is around uh this is a little more toward the evening you can see that blue sky that was breaking out a little more. Why isn't this going? You can see there, and then you had just had some cumulus uh, to deal with there. So, yeah, you did have that. And we didn't really see that clearing until later in the evening, um, looking at the um, skis of the pictures I took toward sunset. And then you started to see a little clearing off to the southwest there. 
Uh, and that was that was pretty much what we had. Pretty sky though, uh, the Cirrus, and then this was again dusk. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, pretty much what we had. So plenty of clouds today. Still see some stuff on the radar. A little bit of shower activity still hanging on on the east end. Just for well, I can't say showers like light sprinkle activity. Um, so when it comes to tomorrow, we have to watch for the possibility of yep severe weather. With this uh, low pressure system that is going to be coming into our area, this little, I guess, short wave, if you want to call it that, that's going to be coming in tomorrow and bringing us more chances for weather. And you can see it looks like they've got us in a marginal risk, Nassau County into western Suffolk, uh, and even goes, I can tell, down through central Jersey. And look at the north and the west, it actually gets more significant. Uh, and I've looked at some of the models, and it looks like it kind of dies, it, it makes it die out as it gets to the south. It's all going to depend on timing, I think. Um, so uh, we will go over to the Storm Prediction Center, but first let's look at our statistics for today. And for Islip, uh, the high was 54, the low is 48. So we're still 2 degrees above normal, even though the high was 3 degrees below normal because the low was 8 degrees above normal. Central Park, a high of 56 and a low of 47, 1 degree below normal there. So fairly close to normal for the day, I would say. Uh, so let's look at the Storm Prediction Center and show you uh, tomorrow's convective outlook uh, because you can see this is the day two convective outlook, and you'll see there's that enhanced risk over Pennsylvania uh, surrounded by a slight risk and a marginal risk that stretches across central Jersey and western Long Island, and then just a general thunderstorm risk south of there. Um, so we have that instability that we're going to have to watch for. So taking a look at the GFS, just showing you, the wider view of things. So that as that low finally pulls out, we don't really get a chance to enjoy the high pressure because here comes another short wave uh, that's going to come diving down and then bringing us that chance for rain toward the evening and possibly, again, some severe thunderstorms with that, which is kind of surprising, but you'll see how fast it warms up tomorrow and why we're going to see that. So let's go first start with the HRRR model, the zero Z HRRR model, and uh, take a look at tomorrow. Um, so you see this this wave, this short wave that's going to be coming on down. Now, HRRR doesn't seem to do it. It actually brings like a little rent. One area of po possibly light showers or sprinkles around the afternoon. And then the more intense line is going to be more for later. So uh, this is like 8 o'clock. And you can see it's forming a line of showers and thunderstorms. And the HRRR seems to think it might actually wind up being a rainy mess with no severe weather. But that means that you're going to have a rainy Sunday night. Um, um, I mean, it won't be that wet, but I mean, it's it's not going to bring a lot of rain, but it's just going to be a, more of a pain in the neck. So if we look at the total accumulated precip from that, you can see it's not a whole lot of rain, but it's got some scattered showers. Just the HRRR is thinking has more of a diffuse, a diffuse line uh, that's going to be coming in with this low here for tomorrow night. Now, as far as your atmosphere profile, we'll start around 15Z, and uh, we'll take a look at our... Um, and you'll see a lot of sat a lot of saturation in the atmosphere, which means plenty of clouds. Let's look at let's look over Jersey. Same thing, uh, a lot of saturation from top to bottom. Um, as we get toward the afternoon, this is the second the second line. You can see again if you're in Jersey, you might have more of a chance. It seems for sun, but I know I don't think it's going to be a mostly sunny day tomorrow like we were originally thinking. So this is what it looks like on the H triple R. So. We'll go look at the dew points and wind flows now, right? Because obviously that gusty west to northwest flow turns southerly tomorrow and uh, south south southwesterly, and that's going to mean uh, a, a nice warm up tomorrow, uh, especially in Jersey where you're going to get into the 70s. The southwesterly wind for Long Island means temperatures will be cooler here, probably sea breeze cooler on the south shore, uh, and then here you go. Here's this area of higher humidity that comes in uh, right ahead of this disturbance that provides just enough moisture to tr trigger these showers and thunderstorms. Um, so it's like a weak little wave, if you want to call it that. And then as we get into Monday, you see the dry air sinks out in again. Um, but that's, that's what's going to help create those showers and thunderstorms. So looking at the temperatures tomorrow, here's a temperature profile. This is what I'm talking about. So Jersey is a good chance of getting to 70 or better, and as well as the north shore of Nassau County, maybe central Nassau too, getting close to 70. South shore, probably 60s 
for the most part. And then it will drop by the afternoon, obviously, with more of that sea breeze coming in. Uh, and then you'll see the temperatures drop a little more tomorrow night back into the 50s. They'll still stay kind of on the warm side. But this weather update's only going to take us through tomorrow night. Uh, so we have other models to look at. So I'm going to go to the NAM next. Uh, we have 23 hours of the latest NAM. Will that be enough to show us this, what's going to happen for tomorrow with this line? So here we go. NAM, NAM doesn't really have anything happening until later in the day. So this is the NAM. And even at 01Z, the NAM is slower than the HRRR. Oh, it's slower. It kind of hangs back the shower and thunderstorm activity. And the later it arrives, remember, after the sun goes down, there'll be less instability. So it was a slower. Let me look at the 18Z run because the 18Z run was definitely faster. Um, and you can see it's got a nice strong line there through Pennsylvania. But then as it gets to our area, it kind of peters out. you got to remember that sea breeze uh, could help weaken it. Um, and again, with the sun going down, the later it is, here we are after 8, eight o'clock, so the sun's going down, we lose that instability. So I'm not really too bullish on a severe weather outbreak tomorrow. I know that the... At least for our area on Long Island, I think north and west, uh, Pennsylvania and the Hudson Valley have the best. Ch Pennsylvania, Hudson Valley, n and northern New Jersey have the best chance of seeing some thunderstorm activity tomorrow night. But uh, you can see how it kind of just dies out as, that, as it moves southeastward. At least this is what the models are thinking. And again, because of the timing, if this was earlier, I'd definitely say, all right, maybe the models are breaking it up too soon. But once the sun goes down, you'll lose that instability in the atmosphere so that's why I'm thinking that you're not really going to see um, we'll go ahead and we'll take some of the uh, these profiles here we'll look at Long Island here for instance and yeah, I'm not really that impressed with the what I'm seeing here as far as instability goes um, yeah I'm not really impressed um, so that, that's the issue that we're gonna have I think it's gonna work against these storms and the M is much more scattered the HRRR is much wetter the NAM is much more scattered with this uh, and I'm hoping that the drier solution, i.e. the NAM, is the right one because the HRRR is going to mean we're going to have to deal with uh, uh, rain uh, for much of your Sunday night after, let's say, eight, 7 or 8 o'clock. So hopefully the HRRR is wrong on this, but it's really hard to tell at this point. Um, we can look at the current radar and see what the storm looks like right now. Um, let's see what it's doing. Um, so this is what it is right now. It's up here. It's way up here. I don't see how it's going to get here any sooner than 8 o'clock tomorrow. It's ways up there. But it, it, these short waves can move kind of fast. It's almost like a little, uh, not quite a clipper because it's not really going to bring down any cold air behind it. But it definitely, uh, you know, this is going to be, uh, I'm uncertain. But if you're, said if you're in Pennsylvania, State College and then, you know, especially Pittsburgh and that, whole area there in western new york as well uh that's when you're gonna have the best but as far as long island goes i'm not really seeing a good chance of severe weather for tomorrow night for long island there maybe the chance of showers or thunderstorms um uh, but nothing really severe and that's if we even get a thunderstorm it may just be a showery mess uh uh ak with that's what the h triple r has um so uh, let's go and look at the FV3, which is the other higher resolution GFS, which we have that in as well. So the higher resolution GFS, similar to the HRR uh, as far as yeah, generating that thunderstorm activity. But then as we get toward, it kind of actually does have some of it holding together um, and then kind of just turning into like a rainy mess uh, once it starts sinking slowly to the south. Um, we'll have to see. Um, how this all pans out for tomorrow but just you know pay attention to the radar and you know uh, i'll probably be doing the weather update as this is moving through i mean if it's impressive i'll watch it outside but it's not i'll try to get home because i don't want to get caught in that damn rain again i'm so sick of the rain it's ridiculous uh as far as skies go we don't have enough of that in so let me jump back to the nam here and then we'll look at the h triple r uh i mean not the h triple r gem so this is the latest nam as far as skies go and you can see showing more clouds over Long Island and then less clouds over Jersey. But then as you get to the middle of the day, you're going to see more clouds roll in and then the clouds kind of clear out. So the clouds are kind of in and out and in and out kind of deal. Um, as far as the level of these clouds, they're probably going to be all over the place. So probably some high. Yeah, there's the high clouds, middle clouds, 
and lower clouds as well probably with this so you know uh you know it'll definitely get overcast for a time when this moves through and then it will improve by later in the day that's what the nam has let's go to the r gem next all right r gem only gives us total cloud fraction but uh show you the same it can be kind of the same deal i think you can see again these clouds kind of come in and then by the afternoon they kind of lift out a little bit and then more clouds come back in a little bit later um and then uh we'll talk about monday tomorrow night i think um we'll go to ventu sky and we'll look at some cape levels for tomorrow um and uh, again, we'll also visualize the temperatures, but you know, generally speaking, you're going to see a big difference in temperatures tomorrow, depending on where you are. How's it getting pretty warm? How's this getting 60s? But Jersey's probably going to get a lot warmer with that south southwesterly wind sheet showing 70, whereas Long Island's generally the 60s, coolest on the south shore, of course. Uh, but let's go to the thunderstorms and see if there's any cape here. So you can see the cape is off to the west. Let's move this over the five, uh, and then eight. And you can see the Cape kind of just never makes it here. Yeah, so that's the thing. So, like I said, I'm not too bullish on severe weather tomorrow. Um, it all depends on how moist we can get the atmosphere and how warm we can get the temperatures. But with that suddenly flow, it's going to help bring in the cooler air from the ocean, which I think would ha tend to weaken the storms as they got here. Um, so that's why I'm not too impressed. Now, it's going to be breezy tomorrow as well. We're still going to be dealing with, look at this, uh, wind gusts. Tomorrow still going to be breezy. Uh, wind gusts up to 20 miles an hour. But then as we get closer to where this front gets close, look at these wind gusts up to 43, 45 miles an hour perhaps. That almost as much as 50 uh, in some parts of Suffolk County. Um, uh, that's really something. Uh, and uh, that's not with the storms. This is ahead of the storms. Um, we might actually have sunny skies this time. But it's going to be breezy, breezy conditions for tomorrow again. You know, as far as getting a calm sunny day i'm sorry that's not happening for tomorrow but it won't be a complete washout but yeah you know that four letter r word definitely in the forecast for your evening so pay attention to the radar and that'll wrap up this long island weather update have a good night